Hey guys, welcome to Limit Break Lifestyle. It's Jonathan here and today I have a special guest with me, Dan J. Gregory. He's an entrepreneur, coach and mentor for and strategist and also a podcast host. Uh, I'm very grateful that I've got Dan here with me today. Uh, I just want to introduce Dan on, on, on how we met really because we met at Tony Robbins crewing on the fire hey. team. Yes, we did. And that was the very first time I crewed in the fire team in, in UPW, Unleash the Power Within, for those that don't know. And that's when I, I met Dan and we got connected and I found out his story very, very similar to mine. For those who know my story from the corporate background into um, how I, I went into overcoming that and starting my own business and all that. Dan also had a similar journey and really bonded and connected in terms of breaking out of all limits and having no limitations upon your life. And from then on, I really, I really resonated with what Dan was doing with podcasting, interviewing all these entrepreneurs and business leaders that are breaking out of limits, you know, not letting any limits over, uh, hold them back. And I'm really grateful that he's able to take his time with me today. Although it's going to be a short time, I'm, it's going to be deep as well. But we, <laughs> yeah. I'm sure Dan will manage to give as much value as he can uh, in terms of the time we have allowed. Indeed. So Dan, let's go right into how you, you know, before you started all your podcasting in your business, where were you? So let, oh, let's give you a kind of brief history of Dan. I gave a talk on Tuesday night um, where I shared 10 defining moments within my life and uh, the respective lessons that I learned from each of those 10 defining moments. And I won't go through all 10, but um, I'll give you a kind of a whistle-stop tour of Dan. Um, so I grew up in kind of a borderline working class slash middle class. Yeah, I, looked at, I looked at the social class thing to figure out where I came from, and uh, it's somewhere in between working class and middle class. We never went without, but uh, we never had any luxury stuff. I didn't go abroad until I was 21 years old, um, which I guess is a luxury in itself, really. We take travel for granted. It's one of my passions. Um, uh, I went to university in Cardiff, studied business and economics, and then followed the path. I followed the path. I followed the path into corporate um, initially, my goal was to work for a major company and have the logo on my CV and then go and travel. I wanted to work for a year, then travel for a year. So I, uh, I played my cards. My goal was to, to have a big name brand on my CV uh, and then go and travel. But then what happened after nine months, I started to see the rewards of working in corporate initially. And my boss at the time said, Dan, you really need to apply for the graduate scheme. Because I hadn't applied for the grad scheme because you know, my intention was only to be there for a short period of time. Um, so he said, you want to go for this because even if you choose not to go ahead, if you get selected, you at least have a decision to make. And I said, OK, I'll do that. And then I found out that 5,000 people were applying for 50 places. And I was like, holy cow, I better take this seriously. <laughs> so I did my prep and I rocked up and um, got through all the stages and then went to the assessment day and... Uh, well, that's a whole different story. I could tell you some interesting stories about what happened on the assessment day, but long story short, I uh, got selected and um, I did have a decision to make because there was only 50 places and there was 5,000 people competing for those 50. So I thought, screw it, uh, let's go for it. You know, I, I hadn't at that point decided which direction I want my career to go down. I was looking at management consultancy, investment banking, corporate banking, marketing, branding, all this kind of stuff. And I thought, let's just do this. Made the decision. And really enjoyed my career at the beginning. Th first three years, you know, first time earning proper money, especially coming from the kind of background of not really understanding what money was all about. <laughs> and then um, from there, I had some fantastic leaders that I worked with, which gave me a really good understanding of what being a leader is. And I was honored and blessed to have these great leaders at the start, which really helped my career because I, uh, I, I kind of went fast out of the blocks. You know, I broke the company record for how long it takes to, to graduate from the, grad, the, the graduate program. It's going to take two years. It took me 11 months. Um, bought my first leadership position, had a team of 30 people, most of which were double my age. <laughs> uh, so that's a steep learning curve and took that team to kind of top in the, in the company I was working with for, for the first year that I worked with them. And then um, it kind of escalated from there. And I, I really did enjoy the first few years of my career. But then after like, kind of year four, I started to think, am I passionate about my career or am I just passionate about the fact I'm learning, leading teams and 
earning some cash because cash was alien to me. And the answer to that question was, I'm not that passionate about what I'm doing. And actually, I started to lose the passion. And I have a phrase that says, when you um, your performance is capped by your passion. So if your passion begins to dwindle, like mine did, my performance dwindled with my passion. So after four years of being in financial services, which was the industry I was in, I really knew that corporate wasn't for me. Um, and I validated that by looking back at the other career options that I mentioned, you know, management consultancy, investment banking. I was, I was classified as too old at 25 to go into investment banking. Um, <laughs> uh, looked at all these options, but it all looked the same. It all looked the same to me, the same kind of gray corporate environment. And um, I was very blessed during my career to spend a lot of time with entrepreneurs face to face. My first leadership position was in, in, in business banking, corporate banking. I had, I had various different roles within my financial services career, but a lot of the time I spent time with business owners and entrepreneurs and nothing got me more excited than being set up to sit another entrepreneur or at the premises of a business owner, visiting a large corporate and just really getting to grips what, with what the business does and how it, how it succeeds and what it, it, it does. Um, so cut a long story short, I, um, it took me another three and a half years to make the decision to leave my corporate career. What made you have that decision to quit? A um, couple of things. Well, well, well firstly, what, uh, a question that I asked myself is why didn't I make the decision? And it was out of, uh, looking back, it's out of fear, out of fear. You know, it's very easy to take a steady paycheck uh, month to month. Uh, and you know your responsibilities. You can kind of do the job with your eyes closed because you're, you're very familiar with it. And so the, but that comes with challenge itself because I'm someone who likes to grow and be challenged. And I, and, I, and I was always challenging myself through my leadership skills, but it was very self-driven in, in terms of my career development. But the fear that held me back. And there was, there was a couple of defining moments. One was I went to a business event when I was, I was really looking at different business models that I could potentially start for myself. And I met this fantastic gentleman who asked me a series of questions. And he asked me basically, how happy am I in, uh, in my current role? And I said, happy is a strong word. <laughs> <laughs> happy should never be a strong word. Um, it should be a way of being, just as a na natural way of being, although I have a whole separate discovery on happiness, which we can go into later. Uh, um, and he asked me, well, what would be the worst case scenario if you quit your job on Monday? And bear in mind, it was Saturday at this point. <laughs> um, <laughs> and he said, I don't want you to answer that now, Dan, but go away and... Um, write down all the things, all the consequences if you were to if you were to quit on Monday and everything you'd stand to gain. And when I did that exercise and wrote down everything that I could potentially lose or what it would cost me for leaving my job behind, mm. I was I was not intimidated by the responses. I was single at the time, I had no responsibilities, I had you know, I didn't have a mortgage. So I was a free spirit. So when I wrote down all these things, it came to me, I thought, well, as long as my heart still beats and my brain still works and I still breathe, <laughs> then I will find a way forward. So, you know, the prospect, you know, I looked at the worst case scenario. It's like, well, you know, I have a good set of friends and family. I'm never going to end up like on the street. I'm not I'm not a heavy drinker or, uh, you know, someone who's going to turn to drugs or alcohol and screw up my life that way. You know, so if I quit and it stuffs up, I've still got a good CV and I've got a good, pe a good set of people around me. So I made the decision after my second defining moment. It's, it, despite that, I still had the fear, uh, but it wasn't long that set that really set the wheels in motion and it wasn't long before I, I I then had another defining moment which was where I met two entrepreneurs in the same just by chance in the same city I had two different meetings um, both in the same city in the same industry and entrepreneur number one was winning he was thriving this is post recession 2012 he was his business was thriving and the entrepreneur number two obviously I can't give their names away or their companies uh, <laughs> entrepreneur number two was losing big losing big he come to the he came to the organization to try and raise more capital but it would have been throwing good money after bad um, and I could see, the problem for me on that day is I could see the difference between the two entrepreneurs and it was painful for me to sit opposite someone whose life was in tatters you know his business was in ruin his partner had left him because he was in financial stress um, but I could see the difference between the two of them. And there was two things, Johnny. There was leadership, number one, that the first guy had taken bold decisions in the face of a changing environment. And the second was marketing and your ability to find clients. Because after the recession, the game had changed. The map had changed. The territory had changed. Therefore, you can't operate the same strategies as you did pre-recession. Yeah. And I think what the recession did was shook out some of the businesses that didn't have viable business models. It's sad to say. Um, it's sad to say that, but it's it's a lesson we can all learn to future proof our business. And I could see the difference, and I could I could see how I could help that guy who was struggling. 
But as long as I was in my corporate career, I had no authority to give any advice whatsoever. Because if I did, other than the financial advice I was authorized to give, it would come back on not me, but the, the organization that I worked for. And that would be a very much a sackable offense. <laughs> right. So um, I made a decision in that moment that I am going to go out there and I'm going to find a way to help other entrepreneurs and business leaders because I would begin to see patterns of what made a business successful or what made a business fail, mainly from initially from a financial standpoint, but then um, through my just curiosity, I'm naturally, naturally curious. So I spent years after after that, you know, after the fourth year, actually, when I when I made that actually initial realization, that I didn't want to be in business. I started reading. I started reading about business. I started reading about marketing, reading about business growth. I wanted to know everything about what makes a business tick. So that's the decision I made. Finally, and the, the, the final tipping point was um, it was coming up to my 29th birthday. And I thought, look, if I don't quit by the time I'm 29, that then you know this ain't going to happen. So I, I said, I'm going to give myself one full year, one full year to make go over this before I'm 30. Let's 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 burn the boat. So what I did is I booked two flights to America. Uh, they were so far apart that it, it forced me. I couldn't I couldn't go in. I, I had to, I had to hand my notice in, and I did still wait till the last minute where it was actually you know I would have I would have it would have cost me money because of the flights being cancelled and whatnot. <laughs> uh, so I finally called my boss and I said we're we're done, and she said I'm not surprised. It, you tried to do it before, and you are the most entrepreneurial guy on the team. So uh, um, I respect your decision, and I left and spent some time in the states for a few months, just chilling out and unwinding. And then came back to try and start my business. But you didn't have anything that was holding you back apart from fear. Fear and the comfort, you know, the comfort. I got used to having a certain standard of living as a result of my uh, my, my uh, salary at the time and the, the trappings that come with the kind of corporate position. Mm-hmm. So the, 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 the fear of losing that was a big fear for me. And then the fear of the unknown. But I tell you, John, at the moment I handed that notice, I felt I still felt that fear, but it turned into more of an excitement. And uh, and, uh, you know, this 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 world opened up in front of me when I left. And uh, it was uh, it was really interesting what happened next. And how did you overcome your fear? Uh, in the corporate way, like I said, it's that it was really going for that process to realize that there is the, the, the worst case scenario. The worst case consequence is not that bad. It really was not that bad. Mm-hmm. I could tolerate it. And I think one of the fact that I did that exercise stood me in great stead for when I actually did start my uh, entrepreneurial journey because I had 18 months of hell. I had 18 months of struggle, stress, and sacrifice. So uh, that kind of exercise prepped me for that mentally because I, 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 you know, I didn't start a side hustle on before I left. I just, I just cut loose. I burnt the boat. So I was like, I'm out. I'm out. I'm going. I'm going to go make this happen. And I had obviously I'd accumulated some financial resources. To, 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 to back me for some time, but then when I went to the States, as it happens, you know, I was just like, oh, let's stay in this nice hotel instead of, instead of, instead of like kind of the backpacking style. I, was, I lived in a bit more style, <laughs> thinking, you know, that my attitude was I'll, I'll figure it out when I get back. And that's, uh, yeah, it wasn't necessarily the case. And what would you say was the rewards that you've, that you've have since, well, since leaving your corporate role? Well, so, okay, so since leaving my corporate world, the first 18 months, John, were absolute a real struggle, and we can talk about that in a minute because there's lots of lessons to be learned there in terms of finding clarity and certainty in terms of what you're doing because I experienced months and months and months of overwhelm, self-doubt, all kinds of limiting emotions that really, um, really uh, inhibited my progress. So the first 18 months, it wasn't a positive place to be apart from the fact that I felt liberated and free to, to, to operate on my terms. The fact that I didn't make the decision to step up and really claim who, who I was worth and what I was capable of achieving is a different matter. But I did I did enjoy that sense of liberation and that sense of freedom. Um, but it was really tough. It was really, really tough. And it's, 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 it's t- it took a long time to to kind of move on from that. And there's lots of there's lots of lessons I could share with you on that. What would you say is your biggest challenge? that you've had during your biz- starting of your business? Do you know what? The, here's the thing. So when I, when I was in corporate, there was times when I had, you know, not direct, I didn't have a direct team of 200 people. Well, there was times where I had teams of, you know, 200 plus people underneath me. And of course, when you're in corporate, you've got all your objectives set for you, the business you work for, have their strategic plan. You know, you're just, you're just a player in the machine. You just, you just operate as you're told to operate. And yes, I had some autonomy, but when I reflect upon it, I didn't really have that much control over anything. And I didn't really have to make 
many decisions if you really chunk it down you know obviously i led my team and you know made certain strategic decisions but ultimately they were within the boundaries of what the corporate company wanted to achieve and what they wanted to do i wasn't able to kind of you know go above and beyond what uh what I would have done and how I would have run the business, you know, global enterprise like that. Um, so when I left, all of a sudden, I had to make every single decision. And any entrepreneur who's stepped out by themselves will know that. And it's, <laughs> what, what business am I in? Who am I targeting? What business model should I follow? Um, what strategies and marketing techniques should I use to reach my ideal customers? And to me, there, all these decisions kind of hit me. And I just became totally overwhelmed by it. And I was chasing the shiny bullets. You know, I was dabbling in different business models. I did everything from affiliate marketing, network marketing. You know, I did a bit of speaking, a bit of training, a bit of coaching. I didn't, I didn't, I just dabbled. And the, the sad fact is, and the biggest, to answer your question, the biggest challenge I faced was the challenge to boldly stake my claim and say, this is who I am and this is what I'm going to do. And then just make one decision about what problem I'm going to solve in the marketplace how I'm going to solve it, what I'm going to charge for solving it, and how I'm going to reach the consumer that I'm going to solve the problem for. That's those simple series of de uh, decisions, if I'd made them on day one and just put the blinkers on and gone for it, I wouldn't have gone through any of the stress that I went through over those first 18 months of going broke. And I did go broke. I didn't go bankrupt, but close to. And there was a day I was living, I was living, um, I was renting an apartment from, from one of my close friends. Just as it happens, I ended up living back together with one of my close friends from university. It was like a 10 year reunion thing. But there was a couple of times where I just couldn't pay the rent. And I had to tell my, one of my best friends, I can't pay you. And that's, that, that hits you in the ego, man. I mean, it's, 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 it's not something I, I felt proud of whatsoever. But all of these things have, uh, have given me a real determination and perseverance. And I, I, the, the, what I can credit to all of those challenges that I faced was that the unstoppable brand was born out of all of those challenges. Mm. You know, I, 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 so when I made the decision to take control and, put, and to say enough is enough, I need to step up. I need to step up and claim my future and design it and go out and make it happen. When I made that decision, it was a it was it was a cut off from everything that I'd done before, and then you know things changed pretty rapidly from there. But it, you know, the unstoppable brand was built from that in terms of taking on every single one of those major challenges that I that I faced one by one. And the, the, here's the other thing as well for the other people who are listening or watching this: when you're in that environment, when you you you've got those struggles, those challenges, those decisions, you think you're alone. You're not alone. What I discovered was there's this, it, there's so many people feeling the same way. Yeah, I was there working from home by myself, you know, not 24 seven, but nearly, you know, I put a lot of time in, <laughs> not productive time necessarily, just, uh, you know, being indecisive and uh, procrastinating and having perfectionism over what I was putting out in the world. Um, so the Unstoppable Brand was built after, after conquering those challenges, but also um, recognizing that other people have the same challenges and I had a desire to help people overcome the things that I began to overcome. and. I also realized that the people who I deemed to be at the top, people ahead of me, I, I saw that they, you know, the more I heard about them and their stories, the more I saw that they went through the same challenges. And we, we, all, we all go through that startup phase where it's, it's really tough. But it's all about persisting and having the determination and being willing to flex and move and adapt until you get to where you want to be. And, you know, that's where, that's where some of the, uh, you know, the idea for creating the interview series was born because I wanted to go and learn from people who are ahead of me. Um, to understand their story a bit like you and I are doing right now so that I can apply those lessons, not only in my life, but share them to share them with other people. Absolutely. And this was why the Limit Break Lifestyle Show was created just to interview people like yourselves and entrepreneurs who's in the game already, creating that financial freedom or living that lifestyle or helping people and, you know, giving back to the to the community. Really learn and adapt you know having all these different strategies that we could learn from and, and, and find out we are not alone <laughs> yes right yeah, absolutely and we all go through the internal different res you know, internal resistance that we go through mm -hmm. was there any internal resistance that you had that yeah so there's many, many i could pretty much think the thing <laughs> the thing is now here's the thing now uh, it's it's a bit it, it, my whole thing is about defying limits. You know, if, 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 I, if I strip my mission down, it's really to free people from the self-imposed limits that they place upon themselves. I recognize that I was the only one standing in my way. I had all the resources, all the connections, all the ideas, all the skills, all the traits necessary to be successful. I was just simply standing in my own way. 
just stood in my own way. And I'm a big guy when I stand up straight, I'm six foot one, and that's a big weight stood in the way of myself. Um, and what I see is that many people do the same thing. So the resistance I had for myself, I think there's many things it could be, you know, I look back, I had self doubt, I had self uh, worth issues, I had self love issues. And what I do now is, you know, this whole defy limits piece, I go hunting the limits within me, I hunt them down, I track these things down, because I'm going to find them out, I'm going to weed them out and overcome them. Because the deeper I go myself to discover what's holding myself back, the more I can help other people go deeper themselves and overcome their own limits. So the biggest resistance I faced really was around my self worth. You know, I, I, it's I do not I have I, I've I've done a lot of work on this and I've tried to figure out what was the what was the cause of this kind of diminished self worth you know, and, and how that how does that manifest? Just to give you some clarity, some context, you know, thinking can I serve this? Per- when you, it comes down to everything. Is it comes down to is this content good enough? Could I? offer this service to this person and charge that much? Am I worthy of charging that much? And all these limiting thoughts come out as a result of low self-worth. So I tried to identify specifically what triggered this. And the the, the challenge is really, John, is that we are, we are shaped from very early age. Mm -hmm. You you know, so some parts of the day I try, I say that, you know, some parts of the day I was being run by my three-year-old self, you know, and my five-year-old self, these things that we have no intellectual or conscious awareness of the moments that shaped us we can go back and identify them for me there's no point i I just don't want to go back and associate to things that have negatively affected me but i'm aware that they were there and there's no point me going back i just make a decision to move forward um you know you can go and see therapists and counselors if you want to find out all the trouble all the trouble uh moments in your past but i think there's no point going back is go forward um so once you're aware of that resistance then uh you know that that's the awareness is the first step to change yeah but wouldn't it, wouldn't you agree that if you was to find out what it was the root cause or in that age and you actually named it, it would bring out more freedom of choice with the awareness um for me the awareness in the present moment is all the awareness i need mm-hmm. um because i don't want to go back and you know, the, the thing is about the past is it's it's that it's not real. It's not reality. It's the it's the meaning we've given it. Yeah. So in order for me to go back and change the meaning, you know, I can't go back, but I can change the meaning now. So the meaning rather now. than rather than spend time trying to figure out my freaking past, I'm thinking let's just draw a line under it and figure out where I am right now, who I am right now, which is one of the most powerful questions you can ask yourself. By the way, is who am I? Mm-hmm. You know, I just I did a big session on that with my group this week, my my uh, Unstop Entrepreneur program. It's a powerful question to ask if you keep asking it. Um, <laughs> um, I just think I'm just drawing the line. And I'm going to figure out where I am right now and what I'm going to do about it. I just don't want to go and freely associate it based upon all the stuff in the past. It's no, there's no point bringing up old dirt. I got enough leverage right now to to move forward. Awesome. Let's go with the next deep question. What would you what would you say the the biggest lesson you had was in, in terms of your whole journey so far? Your biggest learning the big, curve. The biggest lesson, I think, um, that's a very good question. Now, on a very simple level, I mean, the big, the number one thing now when I work with entrepreneurs outside of helping people overcome their kind of in a in a game resistance, you know, all this stuff that holds them back in terms of an emotional level, which is eighty percent of of the reasons why people do or do not do what they need to do to be successful in their business, um, or in, indeed in any endeavor, you know, I did a, I did a video this morning relating entrepreneurship to relationships and how when we know what we want and we know who we are, we can have what we want. Um, it's, it's a very simple formula, um, which is a lesson in itself. But to to extract that to entrepreneurship, knowing what you want comes from. Um, really identifying what I call your wide lens is that it's the big picture and people try and put people try and put timelines on their big picture you know in 10 years I'll do this in 25 years we'll, we'll do this and even that creates limits on your thinking so I just call it wide lens someday someday this is how I want my life to look like and then I do narrow lens what I want it look like in 20 uh, in 90 days from now mm-hmm. how do I take that big picture and translate it to 90 days from now and then I plot my journey um, so getting clarity is probably the biggest lesson. Like clarity is the number one lesson I could offer. In not just not just in business, but in every area. You know, today I was working with one of my clients, you know, as a side side effect of being as part of the program, we're talking about 
you know, connection and loving relationships. And I just said clarity. It's clarity again. Who, what are the characteristics of the person that you want to be with? What are the, what are the things you don't want them to embody? What are the things you do want them to embody? And then who do you need to become to attract that person? From a place of I'm already enough, but actually, as if I'm constantly growing, then I will find a way to, to meet the person of my dreams. And clarity in business is exactly the same. Where are you going long distance? Where are you going short distance? Um, and those key principles when it comes to business is very simple. What problem are you going to solve? What specific problem? You know, when I ask entrepreneurs, what is it you do? And they say, oh, yeah, I do this, this, and this. And there's about five things they do. It's okay. So what do you actually do? And then the next point is, who do you, who do you work with? Oh, anyone anyone the problem is when you try and serve anyone you, you reach no one you yeah. reach no one you need to provide people a door to walk through and from a marketing standpoint and that begins with knowing the problem you solve or the capability you offer and who you do it for great stuff let's leave them with three biggest tips that you can offer them the people who are listening today or watching this all right so number one number one is to be bold enough to confront the reality of your current situation. And one of the questions you can do, you can ask yourself to find out why you don't already have what you don't have, you, you want, sorry, why you don't already have what you want, is ask yourself, why don't I have this already? And once you get through the excuses, because we like to have excuses, uh, you go a bit deeper than that and find out what it is that's holding you back. And when you can confront what holds you back really, truly, and deeply, then you can make a decision to change. You know, a decision changes your future in a moment. It's the work you then do after that decision that's important because we can all change our lives in the moment of make a decision, but the action that we take in those moments of decisions and beyond is what creates real change. So number one is to confront the reality of where you're at. Number two is to really know where you want to go. And I'm talking long, long game, wide lens. Yeah. The reason why that's important is because you know, I think about myself when I was going through that challenge of this first 18 months when I was in real, you know, I was in financial lack. So if I, if I based my decisions from a place of financial lack, then I'd be, ne I wouldn't necessarily be making the right decision for me or my business. I'd be doing it out of a place of lack instead of abundance. Yeah. You see, we, we can't have the opportunity to think abundantly. We can think in terms of scarcity. Mm -hmm. So in any area of our lives, if we're thinking short term, we're not necessarily taking the right decisions. We need to make sure that everything is moving towards us, that, that long, long, what I call your true north, yeah. your north star, and but take every decision based upon that long-term vision. So it's so important. And you know, one of my clients asked me the other day, why, why are we doing a vision for our business and why are we doing a vision for our life? I said, well, <laughs> otherwise you'll just have one or the other. <laughs> and they'll, they'll either merge or neither, neither one will happen. So when in terms of clarity you want to get clear on where you, what you want to create in business and you want to get clear on what your life is going to be about because ultimately your business is going to fund that lifestyle but if you don't dictate and uh, create your life in advance then you'll end up just being stuck in your business and it'll be another job mm -hmm. and then number three number three is to really figure out who you are as an entrepreneur so I have a 5c formula for becoming unstoppable number one unsurprisingly is clarity number two is certainty 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 comes from knowing exactly who you are mm -hmm. it comes from knowing your yourself at the identity level and it comes from knowing your strengths it comes from knowing your values your virtues and not just knowing them intellectually I'm talking owning them certainty comes from owning who you are and the biggest thing I've learned from interviewing many guests on my podcast is when you listen to people speak you can hear that they know who they are and what they're about and they own who they are and they accept who they are you know what's and all the good bad and ugly you know, they're not pretending to be someone else. They just are who they are. And uh, you can shift your identity. If there's areas of your life you're not happy with, you know, I've made constant shifts in my identity. But it's a, you make a decision about who you are and you own who you are and you love yourself for who you are. It all starts with loving yourself. Absolutely. And if we was to, if the audience wants to connect with you, where, where can we find you? Where, what, what can we find you on? So hopefully I'm getting a bit of a flavor about what DG is all about. Um, a, good, a good place to start is um, if you check out the Unstoppable podcast, and you can find that on iTunes, Stitcher, all the major podcasting platforms. Um, you can go to theunstoppablepodcast.com, or you can go to danjgregory.com, which is my main website. And that's Dan, the letter J is in the middle because someone else had already bought Dan Gregory, so uh I thought I'd take the Michael J. Fox route and call myself Dan J. Gregory. So it's just the letter J, D-A-N, 
j gregory g r e g o r y dot com i'll be sure to put that link in the interview in this video as well thank you um, appreciate that finally thank you for your time dan i appreciate and really loved um, everything you shared with us today it's my pleasure thank you for having me thank it's you an honor to be here so guys if you be sure to check out dan's podcast he's interviewed over 70 is it over 70 podcasts you have now right now episode 76 is going 76. live the moment i come off this call there you go there's 76 <laughs> so and he's on you know interviewed many great entrepreneurs be sure to connect and listen to his podcast because i'm sure you'll find something valuable a golden nugget within any one of them guaranteed there's no doubt about it so guys thank you for watching and thank you dan again for coming and let me interview you with your personal journey and sharing your amazing value that you have provided us today thank you my man it's my so, pleasure thank you Cheers. guys live life with no limits see you in the next one